desirable building plot. Yes, very sexy. Approaching four acres. Rather slowly. <laughs> In the Shire of Gloucester. Bomb site near Sirencester. <laughs> I don't know, Mrs. Walker. Or may I call you Helen, since we've sold you so much? No. Three houses, you say? <laughs> Three houses. I'll decide how luxurious they'll be. Uh, drainage on the road? Uh, to be honest, um, I I'm not sure. Gas? Electricity? Well, uh... Cable TV? Pipes for red wine? Again, I can't speak on behalf of the relevant boards, Mrs. Walker, but... I would imagine that... Two times two. Four. But... But you're not sure. <laughs> Mrs. Walker, why are you so rude to me? I'm not sure. <laughs> Who owns the land over there? It used to belong to the Winchendon estate. But now... It... You're not sure. And how much is this desirable heap that seems to have so little going for it? Except my expertise, you mean. To you, Mrs. Walker, £100,000. Mr. Hartshorn, I'm going to be sick. But it's a very fair price. Nothing to do with the price, more to do with my stomach. Oh. Oh, you mean you really are? Um, <laughs> well, where would you like to... We stand in approaching four acres of grass, and you ask me where. <laughs> but, but what do you say to the price? One hundred pounds. I say, I've got the money, so I'll crack the jokes. Eighty-five. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast, Mrs. Walker? A toast, no butter, black coffee. Scars, dear? It's no wonder his mistress shot him. Better now? Bag on. Shall we say 90? Oh, no, dear, don't let's say that. Let's say 85. Or even 87 and a half? Or even 85. A uh, church farm, Mr. Harshorn. Shall I lead and you follow? As usual. <laughs> another calorie of your boundless charm. I've heard all the cover-up jokes about pokey little dumps like this. If you try to go through them again, I shall kill you. You don't really mean that, do you? The place is dripping with potential. If you listen very carefully, you'll probably hear it. Oh, that'll be a tap. Nothing more sinister, I assure you. The kitchen is through there. The beam's yet to be exposed, of course. An interesting feature uh, is the... Tony, please. I am not Josephine Soap from the suburbs of London in search of the great British beam to expose and then cover with horse brasses. <laughs> okay, Mr. Hartshaw, sell me the place. Mrs. Walker, thank you. I really am extremely pleased uh, that you're going to... Before you gush like that tab, pretend you're a car salesman. Try to convince me I should buy this heap of old English rocks instead of its Japanese equivalent. Well, for a start, it's nearer the office. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, if it were Japanese, it would be a hell of a journey every day from Japan, there and back. <clears throat> there are jackdaws in the chimney. How do you know? I heard them as we came in. I want vacant possession, dear, especially in the chimney. Go away! <laughs> oh, Tony, your father must be so disappointed. Why? That you didn't turn out to be the liar he always wanted. How many bedrooms? Two. They're upstairs. Really? <laughs> How original. 
Uh, and does the milkman parachute in or hack his way through with a machete? Mrs. Walker, people will pay over the odds for it. Oh, no. You see, you're not a natural estate agent. You should have said, Mrs. Walker, it's yours for the knockdown price of... 55. No, 50. 50. Hang on, it says 55. Yes, yeah. but you just agreed to 50. <laughs> Morning. You're late. Oh, I don't think I am, Mrs. Morgan. I'm sure you don't either. If I say you're late, Mr. Morgan, then you are late. Then I'm late. But you have to believe it as well. It's two minutes to nine. It is precisely three and a half minutes past nine. Which only goes to prove that the truth is of no interest to you whatsoever. You're calling me a tyrant. Did I say that? Well, perhaps I did when I wasn't listening. Well, don't let it happen again. Uh, this is Tony Hartshorn. Yes, we've met. There's no need to snap and be late. Tony, what time is it? Nine-ish. This is the sitting room. <laughs> we can see it's the sitting room, dear. What's the bloody time? Is there a telephone here? A GPO point, but needs reconnecting. How would you feel if I started lopping chunks off your salary? What salary? Oh, oh, I see what this is all about. We're trying it on. You want more money. <laughs> With you as a boss, when would I get time to spend it? During the time you keep me waiting. <laughs> What's that? Well, it sounds like church Five. bells. If not, it's something very similar. Seven. Yes, they will. They eight. really should get that fixed. No. <laughs> so, you call this a sitting room, do you? Where do they stand? Up the chimney? Oh, these houses were the birth of oppression. Keep your peasant with his head bowed and he'll work like a dog. Sooner or later it'll get into the jeans and everybody's five foot eight. <laughs> Except you. The floors could be learned. But not within the next five minutes. No. I know most things get out of your way, but that has been there for 300 years. Do you think there's any comeback on the builder? Definitely not. Oh, dear, why is that, Tony? Well, mainly because he's... <laughs> Poor chap. Where are you going? To be sick. Well, why? I just fancied a change from banging my head, that's all. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? Coffee, toast, no butter. Look, I know the sink is stone, but I think... Tony, do a... shut up, will you? Why don't you go outside and pick some flowers or something? We'll look around for ourselves. Oh, better still, get the vicar to put his clock right. But the finer points of the house, you'll miss them. Uh, Mr. Hopshorn, I am a builder. I do not deal in fine points. I rip the guts out of places like this and flog them. I have a very strong urge to do the same to you. <laughs> well, if you need me, I'll be outside. Better? I think so. Crack on the head must have done it. Keep staring at your feet. I can't think why, can you? <laughs> I've just been down to Barnicott's factory. The town's alive with it. They share Wellingtons. You and I've got big feet. Sweet youth. Well, do we buy it? Hmm, why not? I can turn this into the house of some poor sucker's dreams. Being careful to use. Only the very cheapest materials. Where next? Um, oh, there's a plot on the industrial estate. Ten small units, I thought. Oh, I'm sick of designing boxes of fish fingers. All the lavatories face the same way and have to be one metre wide. I mean, who ever thought of that? Where are you? Covered. Ooh. Hmm. Not much room for courtly love in these houses. Mm, that's why they had such large families. Oh. Always lying down. <laughs> Tony, we've seen enough. Hmm. Well, perhaps Mrs. Walker hasn't. There are delphinians and daisies and a very strange blossom in the head. But I think I'll just get some buttercup to get some water. Let's find out who keeps adding an extra flight to those stairs. Oh, um, what are you doing here, Jay? It's lunchtime. No, it isn't. Because two years ago we made an agreement, remember? No. But you obviously do. Small print and all. I would take coffee, lunch and tea breaks as and when it suited you. Well? It suits you right now, dear. Perfectly. Any messages? Only for Peter. Well, do tell him. Peter, your mother phoned again. I'm sick to death of her. Me too. She phones at least three times a day. Gives her an interest in life. She's beginning to wonder if you still exist. Next, it'll be your father on that thing, wanting to know why you haven't phoned your mother. You can't always be at a meeting. Shall I get her for you? Not just now. I've got a meeting. 
Me sitting here. You've taken off your boss's hat. And replaced it with my bit on the side hat. I have. <laughs> Feel free to be familiar. Hey, now just a minute. It's not my fault, you know. It's biochemical. Well, I've never mixed business with pleasure before. Not in my lunch hour and certainly not in my office. It frightens me. What does? The fact that you walked in here six months ago and kept on walking till you found yourself in my bedroom. Hmm. I did ask first, very politely. But was I dragged? It was more, why don't you come up and see my architraves? <laughs> it's a very lonely age, 41. You're too old to make off with your son's friends and too young to get a bargain on the second-hand market. <laughs> so what does that make me? You're either after my loot or just plain daft. <laughs> well, that summed up the good guy in me. What about the rest? I'm taking it all too seriously, aren't I? This biochemistry between us? Yes. I thought it was just a bit of fun. Of course it is. What do you mean, fun? <laughs> Isn't it? Not sure. Thanks. We could always call a halt. If that's what you want. I was thinking of you. After all, we don't want them whispering in the corners about you at the round table or the WI or wherever it is you go after work. Out with you, generally, when you should be tearing around with every girl you can lay your hands on. You're not, though. Are you? What do you take me for? Superman? <laughs> ah, to hell with it. It's just that I'm feeling less than brand new. You ought to go and see that doctor. The dreaded Dr. Riley? Hmm. He'll sort you out. Meantime, what are we going to do about dinner tonight? Well, according to my diet, it is black coffee, steamed fish, a lettuce leaf, and not forgetting as many carrots as I can eat. Trying to save on electricity. Carrots. Seeing in the dark. An age gap and a joke gap. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with it. To hell with diets. This is the boss talking. Take me to that new steakhouse. Let's get fat. And Dr. Riley? Tomorrow morning, I promise. Oh, uh, where's Dr. Riley? Have no fear. Where is he? Bermuda. How can we help? Um, uh, perhaps I'll call back another day. <laughs> Rumour does have it that I'm quite human. <laughs> I'm his locum, and you are Mrs. Uh, Walker? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Dr. Valentine, MD, Westminster. Fast. <laughs> um, in the waiting room, it doesn't say you're uh, standing in. Oh, well, that's because no one would want to see me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Try to relax. <laughs> now, what seems to be the problem? Nothing. Oh. Well, that's where it starts to get difficult at my end. <laughs> you see, uh, dear, Dr. Riley's known me since I was 14. I came here this morning with a confession all worked out. Confession? Yes, I mean, sweet as he is, he'd have breathed out rather heavily when I told him. Uh, told him what? And I had a little joke all prepared for when he breathed out. Brr, I was going to go and pull my jacket round me. <laughs> <laughs> well, far be it from me to disappoint you. Um, hmm. <laughs> no offence, you don't frighten me. <laughs> good, good. I'm old enough to be a mother. Well, how old are we, Mrs. Walker? We're 41. I say, we're in remarkable shape for 41. I wonder if we could commit the figure to memory, not mention it again. <laughs> <laughs> Look. People come in here at your age and say, help me. They don't know why. Their, their bodies tell them one thing, their emotions tell them another. And I tell them to try a little Valium or Ativan. I'm pregnant. Whatever you do, don't touch Valium or Ativan. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes us think we're pregnant? Well, you tell me why you think you are and I'll try to... <laughs> I'm sorry. We, uh, meaning we, do tend to patronise the customers and they never put us in our place, as a rule. <laughs> do you have any other children? 
Yes, a boy. How old? Nineteen years. Whatever made you want another so soon? <laughs> mistake, I suppose. Yes, at 41, I suppose you would class it as a mistake. No. No, uh, a blessing. Bloody careless. <laughs> ah. Ah, what? Where does Dr. Riley keep his tissues? Top drawer. <laughs> careless is the word. Oh, but I'm so happy about it, you've no idea. <laughs> a careless, abandoned, happy... What do you want me to do next? I mean, uh, you're happy, I'm happy. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't usually go off like that. I mean, I spend half the day swearing at navvies. <laughs> what on earth for? Because they're lazy. Now, um, I brought a specimen. Oh, what is it? I mean, when? <laughs> Early morning, midstream, ex late night cocoa. Right, let's get down to it, shall we? <laughs> Little drop of this, little drop of that, shake it all about and see what's in the rainbow, eh? <laughs> How will Mr. Walker feel about all this? Fairly numb. Well, for a man in middle age, it can be a bit of a shock, you know, especially in these days of economic pressure. I'm a millionaire. Oh, well, that should help. <laughs> You're a millionaire, do you drink cocoa? And my husband's dead. <laughs> I am sorry. Why? On the threshold of such an experience. A child in middle age, he dies during pregnancy. Are you there, God? It was 15 years ago. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, what? Ah, oh, well, that would make it a very long pregnancy. <laughs> How are you, Mrs. Walker? Uh, that's what I came to find out. Now, you're sure you're not married? To whom? Your husband? He's dead. Second husband? Dr. Ballantyne. I am a one-parent family. And what do you do for a living? I'm a builder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Walker, you are sure you're pregnant, aren't you? I mean, this isn't a cry for help in the wilderness, is it? No, dear. It's morning sickness and a missed period. <laughs> so, you think you're pregnant, Mrs. Walker, and I can tell you that you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Sit down, dear. Do we know who the father is? I know him. I ask merely because one needs support, an emotional RSJ, so to speak. You don't look like a builder. Oh, how sweet of you to say so. And when you say build, what exactly do you mean? Bricks. Mm -hmm. Mortar. Mm -hmm. Whoosh! 50,000 pounds. <laughs> right. Clinics. And the precious baby syndrome. Precious baby? That's what we call them. After 35. <laughs> anything different about me in the next six months, Jane, you're not tell her so. Are you feeling all right, Miss Walker? Extremely happy. Well, that's good, because Mr. Barnacote's in your office. He'll soon cheer you down. Right. Gird the old loins, eh? Too late. <laughs> Just kick him where it hurts. You're so saying all the wrong things this morning, Jane. <laughs> Mr. Barnacote, how nice to see you. No, do get her up. <laughs> how are you? I'm a plain man, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, why not? Because everyone can see it for themselves. <laughs> now, listen, young woman, you may think you're on a cat's whiskers, but that factory who said he'd be ready by the end of the month hasn't even got a roof on it. Is it raining? <laughs> I accepted your tender because you said you could meet the dates. And I was £10,000 cheaper than Cartwright. Look, how would you feel if I started billing you for the money I'm losing? I'm sure it's more than made up for by the amount of my whiskey you've drunk. Uh, no, don't sit down again. You're not staying. I came here for a few answers, Mrs. Walker. Now, your father... My would... father would not have touched you with a barge pole. He warned me not to either, but like a fool, I didn't listen. He said you were a small-minded, sit-on-the-fence-and-never-get-off barra boy who kept changing his mind. You could only be talking about one person. Good morning, Mr. Barnicot. As far as you're concerned, young man, I want that factory complete by the end of next month. Uh, and, and don't, don't try the sodden anky trick with me, love. You want equality? You can have it. Grief and all. Like the governor said. You could be in there by now if you hadn't kept changing your mind. First you want the drain pipes outside, then you want them in. Then you want them out again, then you want them in. Then you fancy the windows ten feet higher. Ah, well, that is to keep out the vandals, my son. The breakers and henters. Burglary, Mr. Barnacote. 
Bifurcated rivets aren't everyone's idea of what fell off the back of a lorry. Oh, some of us think them rivets are beautiful. Some of us owe them our livelihood. Shout at women a lot, do you? Oh, well, she's blubbering because I'm in the right. <laughs> she's at it again, look. <laughs> in spite of all your charm, Mr. Barnicot, bifurcate off. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be back, you know. Oh, yes, with your gang to bash us up. With my accountant, my solicitor. It's the same thing. And I've influence on the Chamber of Commerce. You'll need to have selling bifurcated rivets. And don't you knock my rivets. Sorry, Mr. Barnicot, you must have the last word. <sighs> Women in business. And they ready poodles. Slummy old bag of bolts. Peter, no. Well, you shouldn't let him get to you. I don't. Me neither. <laughs> right. So... That's Mr. Barnicot not getting to us. What next? Oh, uh, um, that cottage we saw yesterday. I don't like your draft proposals. You never do. I hate them. It's me. Barnicot's gone. I hate them. Why? They're cheap and nasty, that's why. Well, you told me to go basic. Use rubbish, you said. I never say use rubbish. Not out loud. <laughs> cheap and cheerful. What's the difference? Hartshaw wants 50 for that dump, and you want a profit. I don't. Three possible landmarks in British history reveal themselves as forks in the road of civilization. World War I, World War II, and Helen Walker saying no to a profit. And letting someone windbag reduce her to tears. I'm going to live in it. Why? I'm feeling homely. You're up to something. Some fiddle, dodge, evasion, or downright madness. I'm building a nest. Well, then you ought to get a pigeon in to do the drawings. <laughs> what do you mean you're building a nest? I'm going to have a baby. What do you want a baby for? I don't. I, I mean, I didn't. Now I do. That's about as clear as one of your memos. Don't, didn't, and do. I won't be asking you to marry me. You know. Oh, well, that's a great relief. I thought it was about to be your next... <laughs> <laughs> Barnaco drank from that. I know, I can see his lipstick. <laughs> you don't mean having a baby is in will. You mean having a baby is in already. But you don't have to marry me. Oh, I know that. So long as it's clear. Cool. I'm 24. Well, 25, really. Too much to lose. Yeah? I'm 41. I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> Doesn't show. That's the trouble with you. Yeah, have a drop of this. Oh, good God, no, I'm pregnant. You know, I rather like children. Not that I know any. You soon will. Aren't you supposed to be past all that? Have you ever had a cut glass round up your nostrils? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Do you mind if I take the afternoon off? What for? <sighs> well, it's not every day you get your boss in the club, is it? I thought I'd go for a little walk around and have a think about it. Well, can't you work and think? There's a hell of a lot to do, you know. You'll be applying for maintenance, of course. I'll just knock it off your wages. Mm. <laughs> Peter, don't tell anyone about it, will you? I don't think I'd know where to begin. Dear Mum, just a quick note to let you know that I'm getting married to a builder who's a woman, four years younger than you, a millionaire, my boss, who's expecting your grandchild. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Pete. P.S. Go to the front door, take very deep breaths, and you'll feel better in no time. my nose at people like us. Not the incessant chat. Blood pressure went right through the roof. Six weeks flat on her back. Off she went to France to have it in a pool of warm water. Ooh, 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 ooh. Late happens to me. And all the chat, the incessant baby talk becomes sparkling conversation. You have this room. I'll have the other. To hell with it. We'll share. Share what? What do you want? Working late, that's all. Well? 
Don't expect overtime, will you? I looked up your take-home pay for last month before I left the office. I was called. Oh, do shut up, will you? Why do you pretend to be mean when everyone knows it isn't true? But it is. All right, then how much did I take home last month? Can't remember, but I was appalled. Who are you talking to? Who do you think? If I knew, would I ask? Probably, to be awkward. <coughs> well, who? Baby. I didn't know they were born so quickly. My baby. Ah. Slapped a preservation order on it already, eh? Well, since we're sharing the same body, I think I'll call it mine. Mind your head. How did you know I was here? Didn't. Which will be our room? One at the end. I packed on my clothes. One suitcase, one bag. Why? I'm taking them out to your flat. You're moving in? Hmm. Well, what difference will a week or two make? Registry office, I thought. I'm 16 years older than you. Oh, sweet 16. I know I end up marrying someone. Why not you? When you're 30, I should be 46. Very good. 31, 47. 32, 48. 33, 49. I know what you're getting at. When I'm 94, you'll probably be dead. <laughs> Don't give it another thought. I only want you for your money. Make this into a home for us. Sure. You don't have to, you know. Then I won't. But you said you would. <laughs> then I will. When? That's another one of your memos. Don't, won't, would, will, when. I don't love you yet, but I'm sure I will. Do something for me. Sure. Panda to my hormones. Mm. <laughs> Chi Chi and Anan. <laughs> They're all messed up. Ask me to marry you. I thought I just did. Anyway, it's the best that I can do. Now, come on, let's go. Well, come on. All right. Will you? Marry you? Yes. That's just what I was going to say. 